Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator. So in this session I will be discussing a very important topic in the infectious diseases that is the sepsis and as well as the septic shock. You take the basic introduction and as well as the definition. So two important things you need to be very much aware of. One, you need to be aware of what exactly you understand by this word sepsis and second important thing is the septic shock. If you see the definition of the sepsis it is a life threatening organ dysfunction right it is a life threatening organ dysfunction which is caused by dysregulated host response to the infection right which is caused by dysregulated host response to infection all right so that is what is the definition of the sepsis now what will be the clinical features in these individuals the clinical features in sepsis is that these patients they will have the signs of infection right along with the signs of infection they also have the organ dysfunction right so along with this organ dysfunction these patients they have on examination altered mental status and if you examine the respiratory rate they will be having tachypnea and the blood pressure they will be having the hypotension and in this organ dysfunction it is either hepatic or renal or hematological dysfunction will be there so that is what is the clinical features and examination findings in patients with the sepsis now you take the criteria for the sepsis right so if you take the criteria for the sepsis please understand the criteria has been released in the year 1991 that is your sepsis 1 criteria and criteria have been released in 2003 that is sepsis 2 criteria and the criteria recently they have been released in 2016 and this we consider it as the sepsis 3 criteria right now according to this what should be the parameters or what should be the points in the criteria there should be suspected infection right so the infection part is like the very important parameter in the criteria so there should be suspected infection and an acute increase in more than or equal to two sepsis related organ failure assessment okay so there should be acute increase in more than or equal to two sepsis related organ failure assessment so this we call it as the sofa right sofa stands for sepsis related or organ failure assessment so this is what is the criteria for the sepsis then we have another terminology called septic shock now if you take this terminology septic shock what is the definition of the septic shock the definition of the septic shock is not all the patients of sepsis a subset of patients with sepsis they have circulatory and cellular or metabolic abnormalities okay so these patients 
right a subset of patients they have circulatory and cellular or metabolic abnormalities right cellular or the metabolic abnormalities and that will lead to substantially increased risk of the mortality right so there is increased mortality risk okay so there will be circulatory failure there will be cellular and as well as the metabolic abnormalities now we have a criteria for septic shock i will discuss subsequently what is the criteria for the septic shock but these are the definitions of the sepsis and septic shock sepsis it's a life threatening organ dysfunction which is caused by dysregulated host response to the infection then the septic shock it is a subset of sepsis in which underlying circulatory and cellular or metabolic abnormalities that will lead to substantially increased mortality risk and i will tell you what is the criteria for the septic shock now this particular sepsis it is a deadly disease the mortality rate is very high right and sepsis is defined as a systemic inflammatory response infection okay so we call this as systemic inflammatory right systemic inflammatory response syndrome that is what is the definition of the sepsis then we have another two terminologies called severe sepsis right and the septic shock like which i was just discussing the right now so what do you mean by the word severe sepsis severe sepsis is to describe the cases where sepsis was complicated by acute organ dysfunction okay so it is the same sepsis itself but there is acute organ dysfunction right that is acute organ dysfunction okay so that is what is your severe sepsis whereas you take the term septic shock it is for a subset of sepsis cases that were complicated by hypotension so these patients they have sepsis along with sepsis there will be hypotension in spite of adequate fluid resuscitation right in spite of right in spite of adequate fluid resuscitation right these patients blood pressure will not improve okay the term septic shock for a subset of sepsis cases that were complicated by hypotension despite adequate fluid resuscitation and along with the hypotension there will be also perfusion abnormalities right there will be also perfusion abnormalities okay so this is what is the term septic shock right and to clarify the terminology and reflect the current understanding of the pathobiology of the sepsis the sepsis definition task force in 2016 proposed the third international consensus definition specifying that sepsis is a dysregulated host response right sepsis is a dysregulated host response to infection and this dysregulated host response to the infection that is the one which will cause the acute organ dysfunction once there is acute organ dysfunction this we call it as the severe form of sepsis okay so until now like everything was like basic introduction and the repetition of the definitions 
right? And this particular definition of the severe sepsis distinguishes sepsis from the uncomplicated infection that does not lead to the organ dysfunction. So, the difference between the sepsis and as well as the severe sepsis is that the organ dysfunction. In case of sepsis, it is uncomplicated infection. Okay, So, there is no organ dysfunction. Right, there is no organ dysfunction. Whereas in case of severe sepsis, there is acute, right, along with sepsis, there is acute organ dysfunction, right. And these patients with severe sepsis, there is higher chances of mortality and as well as death of the individual. All right, now, so this is about the definition of the sepsis. Then to aid the clinicians in identifying the sepsis and septic shock at the bedside, sepsis 3 clinical criteria for sepsis include two things. Number one, the suspected infection. Number two, the acute organ dysfunction. Right? The acute organ dysfunction, according to the criteria, it is defined as Right, it is defined as increase by more than or equal to two points right more than or equal to two points from the baseline on the sofa score. Okay, now what may be this sofa score? sequential organ failure assessment right sequential organ failure assessment that is what is called the sofa score okay so two important things to consider it as sepsis and septic shock number one suspected infection number two acute organ dysfunction defined as an increase by two or more points from the baseline on the sofa score now you take the c more than or equal to two points on the SOFA score was the criteria for the sepsis. But for septic shock, what is the criteria? Okay. The criteria includes the sepsis. Along with sepsis, there is need. Right. There is need for vasopressor therapy. Right, there is need for vasopressor therapy mainly to elevate mean arterial pressure by more than or equal to 65 millimeters of mercury. So, that is one important thing in the septic shock where you require vasopressor therapy definitely. Then, there should be increase in serum lactate concentration. Right, and this serum lactate concentration should be more than or equal to 2 millimoles per liter. Right, 2 millimoles per liter despite adequate fluid resuscitation. Okay, so despite adequate fluid resuscitation, the serum lactate concentration should be more than 2 millimoles per liter. So, these are the two things in the criteria for the septic shock. 